All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this Athenian Stranger tutorial video where today we are going to begin a new unit on solving systems of equations. Now, we have taken a look at how to do this uh, on kind of one-off problems here and there, but this unit is going to really give us that rigorous background that we need in order to move forward. So first we're going to learn how to solve systems of equations by graphing, substitution, elimination, matrices, and then with word problems. And then we'll do the same thing with systems of inequalities. Uh, but first we have to get systems of equations down. So open up your packet to the first page right here. And we are going to fill out these guided notes. Okay, so let's begin. Systems of equations. We kind of need a working definition for what these things are. And so what we're going to write is that a system of equations is one where we have two or more equations E Q U A T I O N S two or more equations with the same variables. So the definition of a system of equations is one where we have two or more equations with the same variables. Now in Algebra 1, we're typically only going to see systems of two equations, but there could be more. Okay, so how do we solve systems of equations and what do those solutions look like and what types of solutions can we get? Well, the solution to a system can be found graphically where the point at the point x, y, where the two lines intersect. Intersect, I-N-T-E-R-S-E-C-T. -E -E so we can find where two lines intersect, those x, y coordinates are, are in fact the solution to the system. Now, algebraically, that is where we're solving it on paper, we are finding the point x, y that makes both of the equations true. Okay? So, now let's move on to the six types of solutions that we can find. And for these first three, we're going to be drawing little pictures, so make sure you have a straight edge. The first type of solution graphically would be intersecting lines. So here's an example of two lines that intersect. Okay. And this point right here where they intersect will have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. And that right there is the solution to the system where the two lines intersect. Okay, another type of solution would be parallel lines. And this is a bit of a misnomer because in this type of solution, there is no solution. So if two lines are parallel, they have no solution. And that would be found if you found two lines that had the same slope. but different y-intercepts. Same slope, different y-intercepts, no solution. Where they cross, there's only one solution, okay? And that solution is indicated as x comma y. Here we have parallel lines. There's no solution because they have the same slope and different y-intercepts, and we say no solution Sometimes they indicate that with this symbol like that. No solution. 
And finally, we have one where we have the same line, okay? And that's hard to draw. You know, you can draw it like this, okay? And then trace over that same line with a different color. So if your solution graphically is that you have the same line, there are infinite solutions, and we indicate that with the infinity symbol like this. Okay, so these are the three things that will come out of your solutions. You'll either have one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. Okay, and this is for linear uh, systems. All right, so how do we solve systems by graphing? There are three steps to solving systems by graphing. One, two, three. The first step is to rewrite the equations in slope-intercept form. And just a little reminder, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So rewrite the equations in slope-intercept form. That's the first step. Rewrite equations in slope-intercept form. Okay, this is again solving by graphing. The second step would be to graph the lines. Okay, and the third step would be to identify the solutions, or you could say, find the coordinates of the point of intersection. Say so we say, find the coordinates of intersection. Intersection is I-N-T-E-R-S-E-C-T-I-O-N, -E -E intersection. Okay, and what we're looking for there is an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Okay, so now that we know our three, our three types of solutions and we know uh, how we solve systems by graphing, We'll actually look at some examples here and solve these systems by graphing. This is important. So in these homework assignments that you have, you'll be asked to solve solutions using a variety of different methods. And it's important that where you're asked to solve by graphing, that you do so by graphing. So here, remember, our very first step is to rewrite the equations in slope-intercept form where it's y equals mx plus b. And here we do already have two equations that are in slope-intercept form. We have y equals x minus 8 and y equals negative 2x plus 1. So we've done step one, done for us already. Step two is to graph the lines. So we're going to graph these one at a time. First, we'll graph y equals x minus 8. And the way that I like to do this is I like to identify what the slope is, m, and identify what the y-intercept is, b. Okay, that's going to help me. So what is the slope of this first equation here, y equals x minus 8? Well, the coefficient coefficient or that number that sits in front of the x is understood to be 1, so the slope is 1. That means that the rise is 1 and the run is 1. And my y-intercept here is negative 8. So whatever number is sitting here, I'm going to take that sign as well, so that's negative 8. The y-intercept is negative 8. So let me graph that line in. And I'll graph this line in using red, okay? So first I'm going to identify my y-intercept. I'll go down to negative 8. And we have just a blank graph, okay? So 
let's interpret each one of these lines as 1. Okay, so this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. And please make sure you're doing this along with me. Right here at negative 8, I'm going to put a dot. And I'm going to write negative 8. And now I'm going to use the slope. Rise 1, run 1. So I'll go up 1, over 1. Okay, that's a point on the line. And I'll just keeping my pen right there, I'll go up 1, over 1 again to find another point. Up 1, over 1 again. Up 1, over 1 again. The reason I'm doing this is because we're going to lay a straight edge on this and we want to make sure that we're actually graphing the correct line and that we're not going off on human error. So when the slope is one and the boxes are small, we want to draw in as many points on the line as we can. So when we line up our straight edge like this, and we're here, you absolutely need a straight edge. You want to uh, be as accurate as possible. So now you can go ahead and, and graph in that line. Okay, so we've graphed in that line. Well, now let's graph the other line, and we'll do this one in blue. Here I've got, let me identify my slope and my intercept first. My slope is negative 2. Okay, so my slope, the coefficient, that number sitting in front of the x with its sign, is negative 2. And my y-intercept is positive 1. So first let's graph, and I'm going to graph this line in blue. I'm going to start at my y-intercept of 1. So I go back to the origin and count up 1 and put a dot. Right, and I'll call that 1. Now I have a slope of negative 2, which means my rise, or in this case my fall, is 2. So starting from the y-intercept, I'll go down 2, and then my run is 1. And that's because negative 2 is equal to negative 2 over 1. So that gives me that fall of 2, run of 1. So I'll start at 1 at the y-intercept of 1, and I'll go down 2, 1, 2, over 1. Okay? And I'll do it again. Starting at that point I just drew there, I'll go down 2 again, down 2, over 1. Down 2, over 1 down 2 over 1. And I'll just do that a few times until I'm really sure that when I put my straight edge on it, I'm going to draw the correct line. So now, line up your points as best you can, and then go in there and draw your line. So this is the second equation. This is y equals negative 2x plus 1. And our first equation was y equals x minus 8. So the solution graphically to this system is where these two points intersect. That is this point right here. Okay, and what we're trying to figure out are the coordinates of that intersection point. The coordinates will have an x component and a y component. So what are the what is the x component? Well, that's 1 2 3. Okay? So it's on the x axis, it's at 3. And where is it on the y axis? Well, starting at the origin, I'll count down rows 1 2 3 4 Five. So it's at negative 5 on the y-axis. So the solution to this system of linear equations is open parentheses 3 comma negative 5. Okay. So at this point your paper should look very similar to this. Okay, so example 2. We have two equations. Let's make sure that we're following our steps. Solving systems by graphing. Rewrite equations in slope-in form y equals mx plus b. 
Well, they're already in y equals mx plus b form. See that? And for equation 1, we have y equals 1 half x plus 9. So the slope m is 1 half. That's rise 1, run 2. And the y-intercept of this first equation, which we identify with the letter b, is positive 9. For the second equation, I have here y equals negative x plus 6. So this is one where you can get tripped up. There is a little tiny 1 hidden there in between the negative sign and the x. So the slope is negative 1. Okay, that would be a fall of 1 and a run of 1. So down 1 over 1. And the y-intercept is positive 6. So b equals 6. Well, now that we know these pieces of information, we can draw in our lines. And I'll do the same thing I did before. My first equation will be the red equation. My second equation will be the blue equation. So to graph my first equation, I'm going to find the y-intercept, which we'll just do by counting up rows. Start at the origin and go up to 9, up 1, up 2, up 3, up 4, up 5, up 6, up 7, up 8, up 9. Right there. Oops. One from the top, there's my first point, okay? And this we'll call nine. This is nine right here. Now, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to uh, graph in the line by following my slope using rise over run. So I'm going to go up one over two. Now, here, notice that if I go up one over two, I'll only be able to find one more point on that line. That one's right here up 1 over 2. Starting at the y-intercept, I go up 1 over 2. So this dot right here is a point on the line. But that's not good enough for our equation, uh, for our graphing purposes. So now we kind of have to reverse our thinking, and instead of going up 1 over 2, we're going to go back to the y-intercept and go down 1 over 2. So that's just the reverse of the slope. I mean, it's the it's the same thing. You're you're from this point, you go up one over two. You're back to this point. So you just keep following that procedure. Go to this new point here and go down one over two. Okay, down one over two, and then do it again. Down one over two. Do it as much as you can. Down one over two. Down one over two. So what you're trying to do is make sure that this line, when you finally put the straight edge to it, you want to make sure that you're passing through all those dots. Otherwise, you will be inaccurate. Okay, so there is a line passing through all those dots, and this is equation y equals 1 half x plus 9. Now, for the second equation, which we'll do in blue, I have a y-intercept of 6 and a slope of negative 1. So let me go to a y-intercept of 6, start at the origin, and go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Right there is my y-intercept of 6. And now I'm going to follow this slope of negative 1. And remember, negative 1 is equal to negative 1 over 1. So I'll be going down 1, and then I'll go 1 to the right. So it's down 1, run 1. So fall down 1, and then run 1 to the right. So I'll go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, like this. It's a negatively sloped line down one over one, okay? And I can actually go backwards. You just follow the procedure. Now up one to the left one, up one to the left one, up one to the left one. Go ahead and put your straight edge to it and graph in your full line. You wanna be really precise. Okay, so there is your second line, and this line is labeled uh, y 
equals negative x plus 6. Okay, So it's this coordinate here of intersection right here. We want to find out what that coordinate pair is. So what is the coordinate pair right there? We need an x and a y. So first the x. Well, I'm to the left of the y-axis, so I'm going to be negative 1, negative 2x. See that? I'm here, negative 1, negative 2. So it's negative 2. And where am I on the y-axis? Well, starting at the origin, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm at 8 on the y-axis. So the solution to the system is at, open parentheses, negative 2, comma, 8, close parentheses. Okay, so this is where your paper needs to look right now. All right, so make sure you got that done, and we'll flip to the next page. And that would be the back of the first page. And what we're going to be doing on all of these is we're going to be completing these uh, problems right here. And let me just take a look further in the packet, see what it is we're going to, you know, we're going to have a lot of examples to work. All right. So let's get through a few of these by graphing. All right now, look at number three. We have to remember our rules. Our first step that we have to follow is to rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form. So here we have two equations. Neither of them are in slope-intercept form. So before we can do anything else, we have to rewrite these equations in slope-intercept form. And this is the part that is, is the most difficult part for algebra students to actually complete this algebra. And we'll try to do it right here on the page. So I'll take my first equation, negative 3x plus y equals 8. And my first step is to rewrite this equation in slope-intercept form. So I have to get this negative 3x to go over to the right side of the equal sign. And I have to use the uh, addition to get that to happen. So I have to do plus 3x on both sides. Okay? And when I do that, on the left side, negative 3x plus 3x is 0. And on the right side, I can't mix these two, so I'll just end up writing it. I have y equals positive 3x, so just 3x, plus 8. Okay, so that's my first equation. I'm going to go back up here and write it. y equals 3x plus 8. So we'll do something like a little semicolon and write y equals 3x plus 8. Next, I will take the second equation here. So let's draw a little line to separate these two little side works that we're doing. And then we'll write negative x plus y equals negative 2. All right now, what we've got to do is get y by itself and put it into slope-intercept form. So we have to now add x plus x on both sides. Okay, so now I'll have here negative x plus x is 0, which leaves y by itself, and y equals x minus 2. You always want to put the x up front and then what's left over to the right, including its sign. Remember, negative 2 and x, they don't mix together, so you don't combine them as negative 2x or something. It's x minus 2. So then we'll bring this equation back up. The second equation is y equals x 
minus 2. So notice first that we have two positively sloped lines. Okay, so both these are going to be positive. We know they're not parallel because they have different slopes. This one has a slope of 3. Let's identify this now. M for equation 1, M equals 3, which remember would be rise 3, run 1. And it has a y-intercept, B, of positive 8. So we'll be starting at 8 on the y-axis. For the second equation, remember I have a 1 coefficient. This coefficient is this number that sits in front of the x, m equals 1. And b equals, including that little sign right there, negative 2. Okay? So b equals negative 2. Now, let's do the same thing we did before. I'm going to graph the first equation in red, and I'll start by going to 8 on the y-axis. So again, we'll assume that each one of these lines is 1, starting at the origin, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, right there is 8. And now I have to use my slope, which is 3 over 1. Remember that 3 equals 3 over 1. So you rise 3 and you run 1. Well, I have a little problem here because if I go up 3, I'm off the chart. So instead of rising 3 and running 1 to the right, I can reverse that and fall 3 and run 1 to the left. It's the exact reverse of rising 3 and running 1 to the right is going down 3 and running one to the left. It's like Tetris. You're just flipping the process. So I'll start at 8 with my pen on 8 on the y-axis, and I'll go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and then to the left, 1. And then I'll go down 1, 2, 3, and to the left, 1. Keeping my pen right there, I'll go down 1, 2, 3, and to the left, 1. And the resulting line has a positive slope down 1, 2, 3, to the left, 1. Okay, That's probably enough points to feel confident. So we'll go ahead and draw in our line. Right there. Okay, and this line we'll label y equals 3x plus 8. Now the second equation, okay, we'll do this one in blue. This one is y equals x minus 2. We have a slope of positive 1, which is 1 over 1. Remember, 1 equals 1 over 1, so rise 1, run 1. And a, a y-intercept at negative 2, so we start at negative 2. So we go to the origin and go down 1, down 2 on the y-axis. Put a dot there at negative 2. Okay, And now we're going to travel up 1 from our y-intercept, up 1 over 1. And again, from that new point, up 1 over 1. From that new point, up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Just like this. Okay, and I recommend that we continue that process in reverse so we can get an accurate intersection point. So just go backwards with your process. Okay, there. So now you've kind of dotted in the line, and you just have to connect all those dots with a straight edge. Okay, make sure you're lining up all those points. It can be somewhat hard to do. Okay, so we're, we've lined up the points as best we can. Graph in your line. Okay, so that's how your line should look. And again, what we're looking at is this intersection point right here. What are the coordinates of this intersection point right here? Well, 
on the x-axis, we know we're to the left of the y-axis, so we'll start going negative here. Let's go down here and go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay? So this is negative 5. And then starting from the x-axis, we're going to be going down, so we'll be negative on the y-axis as well. Starting at the origin, we'll go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So make sure we did that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, so it's negative 5, comma, negative 7. So the solution to the system is, open parentheses, negative 5, comma, negative 7. Okay? And that's the solution to the system. The one thing I forgot to do is label this blue line y equals x minus 2. Okay? Very good. So we had a single solution because the lines intersected in one place. That's number 3. And here we're coming up on number 4. Right? Number four. So in number four, we have uh, one of our equations is already in slope-intercept format, y equals mx plus b, so we're good. All we have to do is fix this guy here. So our first uh, item that we're going to complete is we're going to convert this equation from standard form x plus 2y equals 4. We're going to convert that into slope-intercept form. And I want you to write it just like this. And now we have to get y by itself. So this is going to be a two-step process. First, we have to subtract x from both sides, minus x on both sides, OK? x minus x is 0. And that leaves us with 2y equals. And now on the right side of the equation, I have negative x plus 4, because I can't mix 4 and negative x. I have negative x plus 4. Now, I'm not done yet, okay? because I still have to get y by itself. I'm now going to have to do the opposite of multiplication. I'm going to have to divide each term by 2 in order to get y by itself. So here, I'm going to go through and divide each term by 2. Okay. Now here's the important thing. These two cancel out. These two twos cancel out. And I now have y by itself. y equals. But here's the uh, crucial point. There is a 1 hiding there in front of the x. So now what this becomes is negative 1 half x. So it's negative x over 2 is really, let me write that up here negative x over 2 equals negative 1 half x. Okay? That's a super important thing you got to get into your head. So y equals negative 1 half x plus, and now I have to do 4 divided by 2. Well, 4 divided by 2 is just 2, so that's negative one-half x plus two. So this uh, first equation up here becomes, you could say, you could do this with a right arrow like this. So this equation becomes y equals negative one-half x plus two. Okay? So, uh, we can identify now the slopes and the y-intercepts for both of these equations. So let's just bring this other equation over. I have here y equals negative one-half x plus two. And you're going to notice something right away. We have both of our slopes, m and m, both of them are negative one-half negative one-half, negative one-half. So I have the same slope. And what else do I have? 
I have the same y-intercept. So b equals 2 and b equals 2. Okay, well, when I graph these lines, if I graph them, I'll go to the 2 on the y-axis, and then I'll be graphing in a slope of negative 1 half, which would be down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, like this, okay? If I go in with the blue pen and do the same thing, I'll go up to the 2, and then I'll graph in using the slope down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. And when I put a straight edge to it, it's the same line. So the solutions are everywhere that these lines touch. So these solutions are infinite. So we'll say that these solutions are infinite right here, okay? or all real numbers. That reminds me, back on the first page, I should go back here to the first page, and where we had this, uh, it says same line, we should add in these, these, these things. It's the same slope, same y-intercept. Okay, the important things is that they're the same both the same slope and the same y-intercept. And here for parallel lines, we had the same slope but different y-intercepts. So those are how you determine that. All righty. Okay, let's continue. Number five. All right, so number five, we have here, we have two equations. And one of them is in slope-intercept form, but it's a weird form because there's no x value. It's just y equals negative 7. Uh, and we have here a second. Uh, our first equation given to us is not in slope-intercept form. So let's go ahead and start by converting this equation from standard form x plus 3y equals negative 15. Let's convert that into slope-intercept form. We will subtract x from both sides. Okay, and that gives us x minus x equals 0 on the left. And we have 3y equals negative x minus 15. Okay, and now I've got to get rid of that 3 that's in front of the y. So what I'm going to do is go divide everything by 3. Okay. So I have 3's three, cancel out on the left side. y by itself, y equals, and now I'm back to this problem I have here. I have negative x over 3, which we know means negative 1 third x. Minus 15 over 3. Well, 15 over 3 can reduce down to 5, so it's just minus 15 divided by 3, which is 5. Y equals negative 1 third X minus 5. Okay? So here's the thing. When we graph these lines, we can do the first one just like we have everything else. We have a slope M equal to negative 1 third. That means we fall 1 and run 3. And we have a y-intercept at negative 5. b equals negative 5. Okay, so we'll start here at negative 5 on the y-axis. Negative, I'm going to do this equation in red. On the y-axis, we start at the origin. Go down 1, down 2, down 3, down 4, down 5. Put a dot right there. Okay, we'll call that negative 5. And now I'm going to be following this slope of down 1 over 3. So fall 1, run 3 to the right. So starting at my y-intercept, I'll go down 1 and then right 3. 1, 2, 3. Put a dot right there. Okay. Do the same thing again. Down 1, right 3. 1, 2, 3. Dot right there. 
Let's go to the left a few. So up one, go back to the y-intercept. You just do the opposite thing. Up one to the left three. One, two, three. Up one to the left three. One, two, three. Okay, so we can go ahead and plot in the line now. Just like that. Okay, so that's our first equation. And our second equation is just y equals negative 7. And what that means is that you'll have a perfectly horizontal line at y equals negative 7. So we just start at the origin, go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So in other words, all we're given for this second equation is that b equals negative 7. And what we're not told is that this equation, y equals negative 7, what am I going to do this? y equals negative 7 is the same thing, this is the same thing as y equals 0x minus 7. Now, 0 times x is 0, so the slope is 0. So if you think about a mountain, here it's a positive slope, here it's a negative slope. Right, but if it's flat terrain, right? If it's a prairie or the Serengeti, it has a slope of zero. It's flat. So here we go down to negative seven, and we just draw a perfectly horizontal line at negative seven because the slope is zero. Right there. Okay? And this point right here is where the two lines intersect. So what are the coordinates of intersection right here? Make sure I put end caps on my lines. Well, on the x-axis, it is at one positive. So you start at the y-axis, go over one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm over six on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, I already know I'm at negative 7. Negative 7. So it's 6, comma, negative 7. Right? Okay, so we are going to stop there for today. And when we come back tomorrow, uh, we'll pick up and we'll learn. We'll move on past graphing uh, our equation our equations and finding the solution graphically and we'll move into the substitution method where we're going to solve it all without a picture okay so there's two ways to solve it without a picture one's called substitution and one's called elimination and we'll, we'll do substitution tomorrow so that is what we're covering today and now we've learned something about solving systems of equations by graphing if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to that effect. And if you have not already, please subscribe to the channel so you are always alerted to new tutorial videos. Thanks.